Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter of this video. Today I want to welcome you all on this video where I painted this uh, portrait, a commission by a good friend and uh, I'm using for this technique the sfumato technique as uh, he requested a technique that, uh, as you know, was perfected by Leonardo da Vinci. It's um, a very um, strange, very charming uh, technique and uh, really uh, difficult, uh, can I say, really um, peculiar in its execution to achieve. For the Sfumato technique uh, much theory has been uh, written, but uh, in my research uh, I couldn't really find any practical uh, guidance on how to achieve this uh, uh, beautiful smoke-like uh, transition between uh, light and shadow the way Leonardo da Vinci used and created these uh, foggy-like uh, portraits like uh, of course uh, Leonardo, like uh, Mona Lisa and uh, several others. So many people and many uh, teachers, uh, when they teach about sfumato, they just uh, say that it's the smooth transition between uh, light and shadow, but uh, Sfumato definitely is not something like that, uh, only just this. Of course, uh, Sfumato uh, has these uh, very smooth, very fine transitions, but uh, it's not uh, a simply smooth transition between uh, light and shadow, a smooth blending between the light and the shadow. It's uh, a process of uh, doing this that creates these very um, elegant, uh, foggy transitions by the use of very thin layers of uh, color application. So I'll try to talk a little bit here. If you want to see my full uh, tutorial on Sfumato, you can visit my Patreon page where uh, in a two-hour video I explain how I painted the, the face of uh, Christ uh, Salvator Mundi. Uh, that is uh, where I extensively uh, use this sfumato technique and uh, also uh, I will apply this uh, full tutorial of this portrait on my Patreon page uh, as well. If you are interested in in in-depth uh, um, lesson on uh, on sfumato you can find me there. Here as you see I have uh, already transferred my drawing on my wood panel and I've transferred, uh, um, I, I've already uh, done some underpainting in uh, black and white uh, as if I was painting with watercolor and uh, um, after this underpainting is uh, dry and nice uh, I have uh, applied a very thin coat of uh, oil color to indicate the shadowy areas. I will not uh, cover uh, any thick layer of color here. I will not cover everything with uh, a thick color here. I will uh, leave some areas uh, that are supposed to be in light. I will leave those areas uh, um, painted very thinly upon. So, after I've done my underpainting, I'm applying this green-brownish color in the areas of the shadows and uh, in oil. And uh, now, as you see, I've already uh, started applying the shapes of uh, light on the face of this uh, little girl, as seen on the photograph that uh, I'm using as a reference. Now, remember, when you are using photographs for portraits, you should uh, definitely, the secret I would say, the tip I would uh, give you there is to, um, to hide the, um, the photo reference on, uh, <laughs> on the final result. I mean, some photographs uh, that we use as, uh, as references definitely um, indicate that uh, they have been uh, uh, used uh, as uh, references. Uh, we see flashes on, as reflections in the eyes, the flash, 
we sometimes see strange shadows that uh, only the flash of the photography um, creates. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we we see some distortions uh, because of the lens of the camera. Uh, these are things that we should definitely avoid when we um, use a photograph as a reference for uh, a portrait. What I do is uh, I um, ask the sitter, the person, to pose right uh, next to a window with natural light. I use, of course, uh, a tripod and um, I, um, I remove my camera several meters away so there is no distance distortion from uh, using the camera. So. Really, really, it's very important. I've seen beautiful portraits being destroyed just because the photo reference is horrible. Um, sometimes uh, we place the camera when we photograph uh, too low um, and um, there is this distortion or too high up. We can see the, the, the person seen shorter or longer or things like that. So make sure that uh, the photo reference that you use it's, um, um, doesn't create any strange uh, distortions and uh, you are uh, free to, to begin painting. Here, as you see, I have already applied the, the lights and uh, uh, now I'm doing this uh, first the blend, blending of the light uh, and shadows. Remember, the shadows, this green brownish color is still uh, wet on my on uh, the face so with the use of uh, a dry brush almost i will uh, um, move along the the light the color of uh, the light in a way that uh, uh, will uh, blend uh, with the shadows I'm sorry for this uh, thick accent and uh, me searching for words. English is not my first language. I'm from uh, Greece, as many of you know. And um, um, I can understand it can be a struggle for you listening to, to me and uh, trying to guess what I want to say. Sometimes, of course, uh, the video itself is more useful. So feel free to mute me and just uh, enjoy and uh, um, pay attention to the, to the process itself. So as you see here, little by little, I, I smear the, the color around. I'm careful. The important uh, here thing to remember is that uh, and in all painting process, that uh, your tools have to to obey you, have to do the job. If you are using uh, a brush that you feel is not uh, too much uh, under your control, then um, think about and try to guess what kind of brush uh, would uh, behave uh, better, what kind of brush would do the job <coughs> that you are uh, you, that you want it to do. Uh, this is part of the painting process. We. There are no magic uh, solutions and there are not magic, uh, you know, recipes. So here I'm using this uh, synthetic uh, brush. is um, a cheap, relatively brush, but it's uh, around and uh, pointy enough and um, not extremely soft uh, in a way that it can move the color around, it can smear the color a little bit. And uh, of course, on my right hand, uh, I'm having a piece of uh, paper, soft paper, or a piece of uh, cloth. They can both do the job and I can uh, wipe the excess color that accumulates on the hairs of the brush. I wipe uh, the color away from my brush and um, um, then I proceed with smearing the color uh, more. Now moving ahead uh, uh, some steps, I've, uh, I feel great with uh, smearing the color and create this first layer of uh, blending between uh, shadow and light. 
um, just by moving along a long uh, color in thin uh, layers and uh, now I'm uh, ready to proceed with uh, uh, livening a little bit the portrait adding some uh, um, some warmer uh, tones the color is um, is still wet underneath so I'm using the this the same process applying color and then smearing the color uh, carefully and uh, um, in smearing the color um, creating these beautiful foggy transitions wiping the color away sometimes the, you have to um, to think that uh, when painting in the sfumato technique sometimes it feels like uh, we are uh, we don't move the color uh, um, at all but uh, in reality we you have to remember that the a good um, indication that uh, you are doing great sfumato is that uh, um, you understand that uh, you you f you move particles of uh, color very like molecules of uh, color and smearing this particle tiny tiny particles of color uh, smearing them uh, in a nice uh, great way um, all over the area you want them to be spread here in the sfumato it's not a matter of uh, uh, application of thick color and then uh, blending this color this thick color with uh, the um, color that is adjust adjusted next to it but uh, it's rather um, the uh, manipulation of the those mar particles of color um, those uh, tiny um, thin uh, layers of uh, color and spreading them uh, in with uh, a dry sm sm smooth <laughs> i'm so sorry with uh, a tiny um, round uh, soft uh, brush that is uh, almost uh, dry of course uh, sfumato requires a lot of uh, intuition as well and uh, the more uh, we practice this technique the better we we become i already feel that uh, i understand the material better i thought uh, before uh, experimenting with this uh, process i thought that uh, it was a matter of quality of uh, the pigments that i need uh, you know the most expensive oil pigments to achieve this sfumato or that uh, um, I needed very expensive uh, uh, brushes, etc. It's nothing like that. It's a matter of understanding uh, how materials and the tools behave, um, trying to make the best out of this uh, behavior of the materials to feel uh, and feel comfortable. I was thinking that uh, all those masters that painted those uh, masterpieces uh, must uh, have uh, painted them in such a way th that uh, uh, was comfortable for them. They must have felt that the, they knew what they were doing. They knew how oil color, the pigments and their brush was behaving and they were comfortable with that. Of course, uh, it requires some precision. It requires some self-concentration, uh, some uh, focus. Of course, uh, this is uh, something... Um, necessary but um, they definitely um, they definitely knew what they were doing they knew each uh, uh, brush strokes brush stroke of them uh, what result they would have on uh, their painting and um, they were not uh, they were always in control sometimes uh, not being in control is a good thing in art but for the most part, uh, though these um, master painters uh, knew what they were doing and uh, um, they were not just randomly adding brush strokes uh, without any control. So uh, part of this sfumato technique is to always uh, feel that you are in control of the, of the materials, so that you know what you are doing 
and um, that you are uh, at least uh, learning by practice uh, uh, what uh, is the behavior of uh, these materials, especially in uh, oil color where oil is uh, like an amazing uh, uh, medium to, to paint with. It really has infinite uh, applications and uh, you can do really, really so many things. And the more I practice with oil, the more I use this medium, the more respect I have for this medium. Many people really um, avoid using oil color really because of this, because they feel it's a medium that uh, is not easily uh, controllable. So um, this is true, but... Uh, um, if you insist a little bit, if you insist for some weeks, for a period of time, then uh, you will be, you will get a, an idea of uh, oil color. Now, another thing that I've uh, noticed by doing these uh, oil portraits in uh, Sfumato is that uh, dust is uh, really an enemy. Like, make sure since oil. Uh, becomes um, is wet for several days the, and you can see I have some issues here with uh, dust or dust can accumulate on your uh, painting and since uh, sfumato is something so smooth and uh, something that is very very elegant um, in this case uh, dust can be seen and can create these uh, issues so make sure every time you finish the painting and let it dry make sure that uh, you will uh, cover the painting with uh, something and uh, in a way that doesn't accumulate uh, dust. It's not something uh, horrible. The dust uh, I see here, I can, uh, on the background, for example, I can either uh, wipe it away, or if it is uh, stuck, uh, I can always uh, repaint some of the, the background just to remove. But um, in general, generally know that uh, um, if I was painting in the style of the impressionists for example dust wouldn't be such uh, an issue the the color <clears throat> would be uh, not as uh, smooth it wouldn't be uh, so <clears throat> excuse me elegant let's say in its application so dust wouldn't be an issue here though where sfumato is uh, very smooth dust uh, um, is something that uh, we need to protect our painting uh, from hi so on patreon.com you can find my full tutorial along with uh, so many others about uh, sfumato, the sfumato technique, the way I have uh, painted this study on uh, Salvatore Mundi. And uh, this is uh, an in-detail uh, lesson on uh, the brushes, the colors that uh, I've used, the way of handling the color and the brushes. And I hope you will find this uh, very informative and uh, uh, useful for you. Thank you so much. So little by little, as you see, uh, I'm... Uh, I'm done with uh, this uh, portrait and uh, it's really interesting um, how uh, oil has behaved in some areas like uh, on the uh, beginning of the nose, like uh, between the nose and the mouth, ha how smooth this is and it definitely gives us this uh, feeling of those old uh, masterpieces. Remember that uh, I myself uh, am in a process of uh, um, becoming uh, better. I am in this process of uh, learning and uh, understanding uh, painting. Um, it's uh, something that uh, fascinates me and I find always very, very interesting. So to me as well, it's really nice to see these qualities on this portrait uh, that remind me of those old masters. And uh, um, of course, uh, this uh, another thing that is also very fascinate, fascinating is that I've painted this portrait uh, by using just uh, uh, four or five, four almost, I believe, uh, tubes of uh, color. So maybe five, like black, white, uh, cadmium yellow, um, alizarin uh, red and uh, some uh, brown sienna, I believe. 
So thank you so much for being here. You can find the full tutorial on my Patreon page and along with many other tutorials on how to paint portraits and painting tips. Thank you so much. I, I wish you, I hope that you will be healthy, creative and um, uh, full of excitement to, to be in the studio. I will see you soon with uh, another uh, video and uh, until uh, then be creative. Bye.